In this video, I'd like to demonstrate the operation of the slip roll former to form your leading edge for your airfoil project. First, I'd like to describe to you the, the uh, slip roll former and why it's called slip roll former. Uh, we have two rollers in the front which are adjusted to clamp the material uh, and adjusted for the si thickness of the material. And then you have the roller in the back side which is adjusted with two set screws to form the curvature of the material that you want to roll. Always make sure before you uh, operate the handle on the side that your hands are not in the area of, of the rollers or hand hanging onto the rollers or anybody else who is who's watching you or, or helping you, assisting you, making sure that the, nobody's turning the handle when your fingers are in and around this area because it could pinch your fingers. Uh, the other thing you want to make sure of is that the uh, rollers themselves are clean and free of debris. And uh, I like to use a, a piece of Scotch Brite pad like this here and just uh, clean the roller. And you can rotate the handle for the top roller and back and forth in the area of the roller. It doesn't hurt to do the whole roller. But I specifically want to concentrate on the area where my material is going to be rolling through the machine making sure that's clean, free of any masking tape, glue, rust, etc. Doing the bottom roller, uh, you can rub it on here. When you turn the handle, turn the hand handle slowly, making sure that it's not going to pinch your fingers in there. And I'm using the, my pressure on the bottom of the roller, not, not forcing a scotch brake between the rollers. And uh, you can make sure that the, these adjustment screws are, are two adjustment screws for the forward roller are adjusted well down so that you wouldn't get your fingers caught in there. So these two screws here are the ones that are going to be used for adjusting the uh, clamping pressure of the roller up and down. Wiping off the roller using a, a rag and a little bit of alcohol on the roller. Top roller, bottom roller, feel with my hand, beautifully smooth surface. As I mentioned, this uh, forward rollers are adjusted for the clamping pressure onto a scrap piece of material with these two screws, one on either side here, which are going to be adjusted to lower or raise the, uh, the lower roller to, to clamp on the material. And so it'll have to be adjusted for the thickness of the material that you have and your clamping pressure. In our demonstration, I'll be using uh, 025 2024 T3 material that you've got. And you'll have to obtain uh, the material uh, dimension from your material list in your project sheet. And once you've uh, obtained the uh, correct material, then you can come over here and check that the roller has been set. It's called a slip roller because uh, by lifting this uh, lever here, you can uh, release the uh, upper roller and you can raise or lower it with this, with this handle here, which allows you to insert a piece of material that has already been formed, like with an angle like this here. I can lift the roller and insert my, my piece of material in so that I can put a, a nice gentle roll in it. That's not what we're going to be doing in, in our project. But just to let you know why the machine has its name, being called a slip roll former, allows you to uh, slip the material out of the machine without having to worry about rolling the last, the last little bit. For our class, I like to leave this thing uh, all the way closed and locked. And it's locked by using this uh, nut on the side here to lock it firmly. And then it has a jam nut so that it's down nice and firm. When it is down firm, you'll see that the upper roller still has a bit of play in the bearing on this side and in the gear train on this side. So there is movement in the upper roller that will have to be compensated for when we raise the lower roller to clamp our material. I'll start off by grabbing a, a scrap piece out of the uh, scrap bin of 025 material, which is the same thickness that we'll be using for our leading edge. Uh, I'll lower the forward roller so that I can easily insert the piece of material into the machine. And then I'll raise the roller back up 
just so it gently clamps it on this side so that I, I have to pull it out with a, with a great deal of force to pull it out. And so I have to roll it out in order to release the material. So on this side here, the material it slides in quite easily between the two rollers. So I'll raise the lower roller once again until it grabs firmly to the point where I can no longer, uh, I can still twist it, but I can't pull it out physically. And what that's done by raising the lower roller, I've also uh, taken up the slack in the gear train on this side. And I've taken up the slack in the upper roller on this side here. So it's important that I, that I do get it nice and snug. Get this screw nice and snug here and nice and snug there. And it should be the, about an even amount of tightness on both sides so that it, it clamps over there and it clamps over here with a, a fair bit of resistance. That means that we've got the lower roller set to the correct height to accept the 025 material that we'll be using. So as per your instruction sheet, you've already uh, obtained your piece of material and you've drawn a center line down the uh, material on the inside of the leading edge. And the inside of the leading edge, uh, I like to have the uh, printing, the uh, material specification, lettering, the ink mark on the inside of the airfoil rather than on the outside of the airfoil. That's my preference. Also, the grain of the material. Uh, the grain of the material on this piece of material is in the uh, cordwise direction and the center line is in the spanwise direction. And that's so that it would match the grain direction on the uh, outer skins. For our purposes here, it uh, makes very little difference if the grain is going with the roll spanwise or perpendicular to the roll cordwise. It really uh, has little effect. But for looks, it is nice if you can get the uh, grain going in this direction. So uh, now that I have my uh, roller adjusted for clamping onto the 025 material, I'll roll it in slightly. And uh, I don't know if I mentioned, but the rear roller should be adjusted all the way down to its lowest setting on both sides, which in this case here, there's a number 20, and it's, it's all the way down so that it won't cause the material to be rolled at all. So I'm inserting it, and uh, as I often, I'll roll it all the way through just to demonstrate the fact that uh, when I roll it all the way through and the rear rollers set all the way down, absolutely nothing happens to the sheet. It does not take on a, on a form. So I'll place it back under again and roll it in. And uh, keeping my eyes perpendicular to the two rollers uh, looking to the floor, I'll slide it in and grab myself a soft mallet where I can, uh, now I can tap on the edge of the material, either side as required, to make sure that that center line that I've drawn is in alignment with the upper roller and my eyes, when my eyes are perpendicular over top of the sheet. So a little tap on this side, or a little tap on that side is all that's required to get it perpendicular. So that now I know that my sheet is lying square to the rolls. I'll uh, roll so that my, my center line is now at the tangent point between the uh, upper and the lower roller. In other words, it's right below the upper roller. Now, if you have a partner that uh, can uh, do the cranking of the handle for you, that would be a good time to have them. Call them over, do this in a pair. It's a good idea to do that. And I'll raise the rear roller now by turning the screws on either side. And for our particular project, with the airfoil being three and a half inches at the spar, we're going to have to roll this leading edge around as close to three and a half inches as we can. And the rollers that we have here at SAIT are just, just adequate to be able to perform that, uh, that tight of a radius. So we'll have to adjust it all the way the very first time all at once. So uh, normally it's a trial and error process. You uh, adjust the machine, give it a little bit of a roll, take it out, take a look at the aircraft or where it's going to be applied to and see if you've got the correct roll. If you don't, you give it a little more. 
and it's a trial and error process. But for our project, we have to do it all at once. It's just because we have such a tight radius on, um, on our leading edge. So I'm going to roll it up here. And as I approach the zeros on, on both sides, these numbers, and they really don't mean anything as far as, uh, as, far as the amount of bend goes, just helps you to keep the uh, two rollers in relative alignment to each other. And so I'm going to roll it. As I get close to zero, I want to make sure that I'm back here turning both screws at the same time in the tightening direction so that I have a feel for when they start to tighten up. And I want to put a, don't get them cranked down too tight, but you want them just snug. And both sides, the same amount of tightness. So my right, my right hand over here, my left hand over here, and then I can switch my right hand back and forth just to get, make sure I have the correct tension on both sides. Now I've got my roller set for the maximum amount of curvature to roll my leading edge. Take your handle, give it a little turn in one direction, and then go counterclockwise the other direction. And we haven't gone too far yet, we've just gone a little ways, and we can begin to see what's happening, what's occurring here. Metal is being formed around, and where I haven't done any rolling, there's a flat area over top on my material here. Now we've already marked the edge, of the leading edge on the top side, on the outer edge, with a line, and it's about 5 eighths of an inch from the trailing edge into the line. That's where I want my, my bending to end, right around the 3 quarters to 5 eighths of an inch. I like to shoot for the 5 eighths of an inch myself giving me the maximum amount of bend that the machine will provide. Once again, it's a process of trial and error as you crank the handle to see how far the material has to go into the roller to be able to obtain that 5 eighths of an inch flat and then the material starts to roll away. So I'm just going to go back in this direction a little bit more. And through years of experience, I've, I've pretty much uh, establish how far to go in the roller just by visual. How you're going to have to do it is you'll, after you've rolled it, bring it out to a, a point like I have it here, take your ruler, uh, place it onto the material. So to, in my, my case here, the 10 inch mark on my ruler lines up with the trailing edge of the material. And then by getting down and, and taking a look, you can see that the material is flat and it starts to peel away right around the 3 quarter inch to 5 eighths of an inch mark. And that's just about perfect. That's just about where you would want it to be. Uh, and so I'll uh, roll the lower edge now underneath the, uh, between the two rollers. And once again, it's through years of experience uh, that I've been practicing this. I know pretty much how far to go and where to stop and I'll roll it back in this direction so that it's on top and again I'll take my ruler I'll place the 10 inch mark on the trailing edge of the leading edge and take my eye and take a look down and you see 5 eighths of an inch right to the black line and that's where it starts to peel away and that means that I've obtained the, uh, the bending as close as I can to the, to the edge still leaving a flat spot to lay on top of my spar. Crank it around again to the, to the center of the leading edge and then you can release or lower the, tr the rear roller. So I turn the screws counterclockwise in a loosening direction and you see as I took the tension off the handle fell all by itself because it's now it's free to rotate. There's nothing stopping it. And I'll back all these, these uh, two rollers, these two adjusting screws, all the way back to the 20 mark on each side. And roll it up this way here so that uh, you can see when I measure from the uh, leading edge there to the leading edge here, I have about, well, it's reading about four inches right now. If you can get it to, to four inches below four and a quarter, you've done fairly well. You've got it about as tight as you can, you can roll it. 
The additional half inch, you just have to form that with your fingers. Once I've released the pressure on the roller, roll it out, and I can lay it on a flat surface, make sure that it's not warped. It shouldn't be warped because I laid it, had it perpendicular. The edge is nice and flat. Measured across here, that's my four inches, and I can just with a gentle squeezing pressure bring it down to three and a half inches. And that's all there is to uh, forming a leading edge using the slip roll former.